Starting us off tonight, uh, we have some news about an upcoming Star Wars movie. Finally, uh, a new trailer, a uh, new trilogy starring Daisy Ridley uh, as Ray Palpatine Skywalker the uh, Third <laughs> is set to begin filming in early April of next year, according to ProductionList.com, uh, a site that tracks production updates for the film and TV industry alliance. Uh, so, after numerous announcements, cancellations, so many kind of cancellations, so many cancellations. My question, though, to kick this off, though, go is the Ray film the right film to come back after the sequel trilogy? No, straight up. No, um, let's talk about the things that are in the pipeline that have not yet been officially canceled. OK, you have James Mangold doing the uh, origins of the Jedi movie, which he's described as a sword and sandals, biblical epic level movie describing the origins of the Jedi. Um you have Taika Waititi's film, whatever that is. Yeah. Right. And God knows what Taika's going to do. Right. Uh, you've got a few other things in the pipeline. The reason yeah. I say no is I think that this is going to be a divisive one to bring back to the fan base. Right. And again, I want to be clear here. I don't think Daisy Ridley did a bad job as Ray Skywalker Palpatine the third. Okay. <laughs> I thought that she did the absolute best that she could with the material that she was given by the writers and producers of the sequel trilogy. Yes. Okay. I think she did a fine job. I think I put all of the blame for what happened toward the tail end of the sequel trilogy with yes. on the writers and producers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Full stop. That, again, that all being said, the concept for this film is that it will take place 15 years after episode nine. And it will be about her rebuilding the Jedi Order, which I think is a good concept. Yes, I agree. But this I is... I like the concept. This is not the one I would have come out the gate with. Not yeah. after what happened with the sequels. Right? I think you... Yeah, I, I agree. I think you need a palate cleanser. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to... We need a Rogue One, something a la Rogue One. We, I think you could go that way. I think you could go a couple of different ways. I would say that Dave Filoni's Rebel Season 5 is not the way to go, or uh, as I deemed it in the rundown, Rebels the movie, um, because that's all that I think that the the uh, Dave Filoni movie is going to end up being. I'm going to watch it. I'm probably going to love it. Probably. Going to give it the hype, but um, I think it's just going to be Rebels the movie. And that's going to just end that whole thing. And then we're going to see some nod to the first order and stuff like that coming out of it as a way to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. um, James Mangold one has me interested. Taika Watiti's is, is I don't want it to be Thor love and thunder in star Wars. I, I want it to be Thor Ragnarok. I don't, I don't want to be Thor Ragnarok. That's too comedy for, for star Wars. I think. For it to be taken seriously. I think it's too comedy a little bit in some ways. The only reason um, I will disagree with you is if, if the MCU proved one thing, it's that you can take one IP, one franchise, and you can do vastly different tones in a lot mm -hmm. of different movies, and it will still work, right? Winter Soldier was a political, like, spy thriller kind of thing, yeah. right? Thor Ragnarok was freaking hilarious, right? Um, Thor Love and Thunder was a little too much over, right? Uh, Captain America was an old school war movie, right? Mm -hmm. Iron Man was its own thing. Like you can do vastly different tones for all of these things within the same umbrella franchise and it will work if it's done well. Yeah. Here's the thing that I have to, here's my, my main issue with it mm -hmm. is that at the moment he's got one movie in him. And he's got to make you really care about those characters. And that's, that's the thing that I think is missing. That's the thing. That was the redeeming value of the sequel trilogy is I gave a damn about the characters because Daisy Ridley and everyone did such a good job in the acting. Mm -hmm. Like they had, they phoned it in. We would star Wars might've been over with <laughs> like maybe not that drastic, but, but, but they care. They did the best they absolutely could, and they acted their butts off in that whole thing. They tried. Um, and and I worry about 
some of the style from Watiti coming in there. The ones that I really want to see is Ryan Johnson's trilogy. Because the middle the middle eights I think, of the sequel trilogy was the best thing. I I think again, I it's the last thing I saw from Ryan Johnson, that one's on hold. And I think that they're literally just saying it's on hold, and I think that one's gonna get quietly canceled. I don't think the Ryan I, Johnson's I hope not because he did such a great job. He did I'll say he did an okay job. Um, I definitely have some critique of Last Jedi. You and I have been through this a lot of different times. Um, just change the casino scene. Just change it to I, Lando there, and he'd be fine. The, I, that's always been my thesis. Yes. Um, the one that I am looking most forward to, too, and you've got it in the rundown. I can't believe I forgot about it, is Donald Glover is not only at the lead in, but is writing yeah. the Lando movie. Okay? Yes. And if you don't, if you don't understand how good of a writer Donald Glover is, go yes. watch Atlanta. Yes. Okay. That fool knows how to write. I mean, I am really looking forward to that film. I think this it's going to be this solid. Is, this is my argument for uh, recasting the younger versions of all this stuff is that I didn't like who they cast for uh, for Solo. I didn't think he came across as a good Han Solo character. Mm -mm. But Donald Glover as Lando, all day. Yep. Chat saying Donald Glover's a national treasure. He is. Oh, he really is. He really. He is. really is. Um, Childish Gambino and and all of that kind of stuff too that he does in music. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Um, what's interesting to me is this is the first one after all the announcements, all the stuff they've been in development. The other thing that surprises me is this is the first one they managed to get to a production level, which is interesting to me. You couldn't get anything else fully greenlit before this. Because there was a lot of stuff that was in development long before this film was announced. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, look, I'm going to always look at it and want to get more. I'm always going to want to get more Star Wars out there. Um, I have been on the record many times as saying some Star Wars is better than no Star Wars. It's been literally five years since we had a film. And it'll be another two, two. to three before we get if probably they, two. If they start filming in April, it'll be a, probably at a 80, 90 day shoot. So they'll be done by July. They'll go into post. They could get it out Christmas of 2025. That's my call. We're two years out. That's well, t Christmas of 2025 would put it in a good place for a Star Wars movie. And that, that's where they had moved everything to. Once Disney took it, they moved everything from May to Christmas. Um, yeah. Which Andor I, again, season two got a little bit delayed. It's going um, into 2025 because of the writer strike. Uh, real yeah. quick side note uh, the SAG contract was ratified. It was ratified earlier it, today. It, yes. was, it was announced earlier today that it was ratified with 78% of the vote, which was higher than a lot of people thought it was going to be because it was a lot of. A lot of consternation about the contract that they the board had agreed to, but at least we're not going to go into a production halt for three more years. So right, <laughs> yay. Um, didn't Andor season two? Yes, it did. Get, okay, that's what you're talking about. You're responding to that one. Um, for for the the question that that somebody had when it came into like who you would do for like a a younger Han Solo, um, like Austin Butler might be pretty good. Uh, he was in that Elvis Presley movie and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like he would be a good, he could bring the swagger. Like, that's the thing that, that, that Elvin Aaron Wright brings. didn't get. Yep. Yeah. He just didn't get the swagger to it. He got the, he got the Nathan Drakiness, the, you know, adventurer kind of mm -hmm. pull for it. And I thought that worked really, really well, but he didn't have the swagger and the cockiness that Han Solo had. Mm -hmm. Um, or even the kind of thing that like, um, in Andor, like when he's, like when the main character in Andor and stuff like that, he's full of himself, but he you can kind of tell under the, the surface he's not entirely like confident in his in his ability to get it done and stuff like that. But he exudes that confidence to everybody else. And, you know, the viewer can see it, but maybe he can't and stuff like that. And I think that's something that is interesting as sort of a playoff mm -hmm. um, that I would say. So that might be my pick for a young, you know, Han Solo to kind of bring back. Uh all right, last last question on the Ray movie, and then we'll we'll move on to our next topic. Mallow, 
do we get Force Ghost Luke in the Ray movie? Probably. A la Obi Wan. Yeah, probably because I don't think they can help themselves at this point. Um, I think it should I, be I brief if it. they do it. I think it should be brief. It should be just yeah. like Force Ghost Obi Wan was in episodes five and six. You shouldn't see him for more than a couple of minutes. I I don't want it to be honest with you. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's needed for this kind of thing. I think we finally need something to we need something non Skywalker saga and. If she's going by Ray Skywalker, then I guess technically it carries on the Skywalker we, we have saga. To, yeah, they're going to do it. You know what would be really fun, too, is if we got like a triple force ghost with a you and Obi-Wan, a Hayden Anakin, and a Luke force ghost all at the same time instructing Ray about all the mistakes that they made. That I could buy. That I would buy and probably twice on Sunday. Um, that would be because fun. I think that, would that would be a would fun be sequence. One. Yeah. Because we've never seen Luke and that version of Anakin interact. <laughs> and I, I, I have a lot of issues with the Ahsoka series from a very critical place. I overall thought the series was fantastic, but I think as a Star Wars nerd, I was be okay. From a cash fan kind of thing, I have a lot of issues with that particular series. Mm -hmm. um, Hayden's performance and what it did to set all of that stuff up I thought was fantastic. And see, I'd love to see him and is, Luke kind of talk through it. This is where I give Hayden his performance credit for uh, Obi-Wan. Because the sequences between Vader and Obi-Wan where his face gets all slashed open and stuff. Great. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, let us know. If you're watching this on YouTube later, let us know in the comments what you think. Do you think yeah. a Ray Skywalker movie is a good idea? Um, we're, we're skeptical. And what do you think is going to... And, and tell us what you think is going to happen in this trilogy. Because... It's been announced as a trilogy, in and theory. they've sort of shadow produced this thing without anybody knowing, which I think is probably the right call, but let us know. We'd love to hear from you.